As we're all spending most of our time at home, the Museum of Norwich at the Bridewell has come up with a creative way to challenge your family or friends you live with in a homegrown escape room game. Keep watching to find out how you can escape boredom with just pencils, paper, sticky tape, a few things you'll probably have around the house, and some imagination. Ah, hello again. Professor Lozenge here with three more puzzle ideas for the Lockdown Living Room Escape Challenge. These ones are really simple but effective. Now, board games can be fun. Families have been playing them for centuries. Norfolk Museum Service has a wonderful collection of children's puzzles and games from early Victorian times to the present day. If you've played all the ones you've got at home during lockdown, though, there's a good chance you've become bored with board games by now. Don't throw them away, though, because for our first puzzle this time you'll need a dice. Or, if you're old-fashioned, a die. It doesn't matter what you call it, but you'll need one of these things. You can borrow one from a board game. It'll be easier for you to make the rest of this puzzle if it's not too small. You'll also need a piece of paper, a ruler, a pencil, and a pen. You're going to make a grid that the dice needs to be rolled across square by square to reveal another four digits. Make up your combination, obviously using only the digits 1 to 6, and check it works in your codex. And that's the book that the players will use to turn a combination into a word, remember. Check back to part 1 if you need a refresher. And there's a handy crib telling the players how to use it in the PDF that you can download. First, measure your dice. Uh, this one's about 16 millimetres. Then, using a light pencil, draw a grid with squares that size. Oh, thank you. I think about 4 by 4 should be enough. When you've drawn your grid, mark the square where you're going to start by writing one on top. I'm going to start in this corner. Put the dice there with the two facing towards you. And write to this side next to it. Now, rotate the dice one square at a time until your first digit is revealed. You can take any route you like, but mark each square as you leave it, so you know where you've been. When you get to the first digit, mark it with the letter A. My combination's 2, 5, 6, 4, so I'm only going one square for the first digit. Then on to the next digit and mark it B. Being in that square. The only thing is to avoid crossing your path or it'll get confusing. Repeat that for the other two digits. When you've made your route, draw the outline of each square and the letters in pen and rub out the pencil marks. It's also a good idea to add a little curved arrow so that the players know that they've got to rotate the dice between each square. Double check that your puzzle works and you're ready to go. Two, five, six, four. Make sure you remember the solution or keep a note of it because you'll be the games master and will need to clue the players if they get stuck. Now. What, as someone once asked, have the Romans ever done for us? Well, that's a very big question, and the answer's a very long list. But one thing they didn't give us was a useful numbering system. It's fine for counting, but pretty useless for doing maths. Don't worry, though, because there's no maths needed here, just words. Take a look at these. They look pretty straightforward, but they're not entirely what they seem. They all have Romans hiding in them. Uh, running through them quickly, a uh, 4 is hiding in 5, 9 is hiding in 6, 5 is hiding in 7, 1 is hiding in 8 and in 9, and incredibly enough 55 is hiding in 12. I'm sure you've worked it out, haven't you? There are Roman numerals concealed in their names. IV is 4, IX is 9, V is 5, I is 1, and LV is 55. 
You can use them to make another combination. Mine's going to be 5549. So it'll be 12 for the 55, 5 for the 4, and 6 for the 9. Make up a clue, something like this. I hope you find this. I overheard the kidnappers plotting something about hiding a number of Roman clues nearby. Then write your code numbers as words, of course, on another piece of paper, and perhaps label it Roman Clues to give the players a hint. Another puzzle done! Don't forget to join us for two more films with tips on how to put them all together and make a complete game. One more quick puzzle for this episode. You'll probably have plenty of things in your home that you can hide a solution in. We've already used a book as the codex, but I'm thinking of round things in rectangular cases. CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, console games, and even LPs. You could cut out a circle of paper to give a clue that they're looking for a disc, or just draw a circle. Then add a cryptic clue to a disc that everyone knows. Perhaps Egyptian tombs on the fourth planet get medical attention. Yeah, that works. Means nothing to me. It's this! Classic Doctor Who from 1975. And inside, you could hide another combination to decode with your codex, or go straight for a word that opens one of your boxes, or even part of another puzzle. That's no good, Herbert. This puzzle's too hard. Have you got an easier one? Hang on, I'll give you a hand. More puzzles next time. Excuse me, this might take a while. Good luck with making the puzzles. Don't forget to download the information pack, and most important of all, please share on social media.